We always hear about how advanced and modern China's space program has become. Their problems rarely make headlines. But this time, things aren't running as smoothly as usual. China is facing a serious issue that has left three of its astronauts stuck on the Tiangong space station with no confirmed way home yet. In this video, we're going to break down exactly what happened, how their spacecraft ended up damaged, and what China is doing right now to fix the situation and keep the crew safe. Before we get into the details, make sure to subscribe to the channel. The three astronauts arrived back in April 2025, beginning what was supposed to be a standard six-month mission. Everything looked smooth when their replacements launched aboard Shenzhou-21 and docked with the station. After the hatch opened, both crews spent a few days together. But right after the cheerful handover ceremony, things took a sharp turn. The China Manned Space Agency announced that the Shenzhou-20 spacecraft may have been struck by a tiny but dangerous piece of orbital debris. They didn't say when the impact happened, only that engineers saw no signs of trouble earlier in the week. That's a little unsettling, because it means the damage wasn't instantly noticeable, which is exactly why space debris is such a major threat. Most people hear small debris and imagine something like dust or sand. Harmless, right? Not in orbit. Even a one-centimeter piece of metal can hit with explosive force because everything in low Earth orbit travels at roughly 17,000 miles per hour. At that speed, metal fragments don't just scratch a spacecraft. They can pierce through shielding, damage electronics, crack pressure lines, or knock out navigation sensors. A tiny hole in the wrong spot can turn into a life-threatening emergency quickly. This isn't the first time a spacecraft has had a close call. In fact, Something very similar happened to Boeing Starliner earlier in its testing phase. During the Starliner crewed flight test, the mission that got stuck on the International Space Station for months, engineers discovered a long list of unexpected problems, including a coolant leak and dozens of stuck valves. At one point, NASA even considered leaving the Starliner docked as a lifeboat, while the astronauts returned on SpaceX's Crew Dragon instead. The situation became so complicated that two astronauts who launched on Starliner ended up returning to Earth aboard another spacecraft. It was embarrassing for Boeing, but it also showed how agencies build redundancy into their systems. What China is facing now is different in the cause, but similar in the challenge. The threat isn't a manufacturing flaw. It's the environment around the station. The space around Earth is becoming extremely crowded. More satellites, more spent rocket bodies, more fragments from old collisions and explosions. Tiangong and the ISS deal with this constantly. In 2021, a piece of debris punctured the ISS Canadarm 2 robotic arm. It didn't destroy it, but the hole was a reminder of how little warning crews sometimes get. That's why this Shenzhou 20 situation isn't being taken lightly. The astronauts have already spent over six months on the station, which is normal, but delaying their return introduces new risks. If the damage to the spacecraft affects things like re-entry orientation, heat shielding, parachute deployment, or propulsion, then using it to bring the crew home becomes dangerous. So China now has to decide, is the vehicle safe, or should they switch to a backup rescue plan? Normally, the outgoing crew would simply board their own spacecraft, close the hatch, undock, and begin the return sequence. But if that vehicle is compromised, China has two backup options. The first is to let the Shenzhou-20 crew ride home aboard Shenzhou-21, the same spacecraft their replacements arrived in. This is exactly what NASA once considered for Starliner. But doing that would leave the new crew without a ride home until another Shenzhou capsule is launched. That leads to the second option, the standby emergency craft on Earth. China always keeps another Shenzhou spacecraft mated to a Long March rocket on the launch pad in case an emergency rescue mission is needed. For this rotation, that backup vehicle would be Shenzhou-22. If the engineers declare Shenzhou-20 unsafe, they could launch the backup spacecraft to pick up whichever crew needs it. It might sound dramatic to talk about keeping a rescue spacecraft on standby, but this rolling backup system is actually a normal part of human spaceflight. NASA and Roscosmos have dealt with almost identical situations in the past, 
It might sound dramatic to keep a rescue spacecraft ready, but this is actually normal for human spaceflight. China isn't doing anything special here. NASA and Russia have dealt with almost identical situations where a crew's main ride suddenly became unsafe, and they needed a backup vehicle prepared on the ground. One of the clearest examples happened in late 2022 with a Russian Soyuz capsule that was docked to the International Space Station. While it was sitting there, ground controllers noticed a stream of coolant leaking into space. A tiny piece of debris or a micrometeoroid probably punctured one of the radiator lines. The capsule still looked fine from the outside, but without coolant, it couldn't control its internal temperature during re-entry. The heat buildup could have been dangerous for the crew. Suddenly, the two Russian cosmonauts and the NASA astronaut who were supposed to go home in that Soyuz didn't have a safe vehicle anymore. NASA and Russia had to quickly figure out contingency plans. One of the first ideas NASA explored was using SpaceX's Crew Dragon as a temporary evacuation vehicle. Dragon had empty seats, so engineers started checking whether they could strap in an extra astronaut by installing a special seat on the floor. NASA ran safety checks, simulations, and emergency procedures, because the situation was serious enough that Dragon might have needed to bring home at least one of the stranded crew members. Eventually, Russia decided on a different solution. They launched another Soyuz capsule without any crew inside. It flew up empty and docked to the station purely as a replacement ride home. But because Soyuz launches take months to schedule and prepare, the affected astronauts had to wait a long time. Their normal six-month mission stretched extremely long until the new capsule finally arrived. Only then did they have a reliable way to return to Earth. A similar situation happened with Boeing's Starliner during its crewed test flight in 2024 to 2025. Starliner reached the station successfully, but once it docked, engineers found several problems. Helium leaks in the propulsion system, thrusters that weren't firing properly, and overheating in key components. Instead of stabilizing, the issue list grew. NASA quickly realized they might not be able to trust Starliner to bring the astronauts home safely. Just like with the Soyuz incident, NASA activated the backup plan. SpaceX's Crew Dragon was placed on standby as the emergency return option. NASA even extended the astronauts' stay on the station while they evaluated whether Starliner could be safely undocked. In the end, the decision was clear. Starliner was too risky, so the astronauts didn't return in it. Crew Dragon brought them home instead, and Starliner re-entered the atmosphere empty. No crew on board, just like the rescue Soyuz flight. Although China is dealing with a serious problem right now, it doesn't change the bigger picture. Their space program is catching up to the United States incredibly fast. And the truth is, the only major advantage the U.S. still has is SpaceX. Last year, China completed around 68 orbital launches. The U.S. looks much stronger on paper with about 169 launches, but most people don't realize that around 140 of those were SpaceX alone. If you remove SpaceX from the equation, the rest of the United States combined only launched about 29 rockets for the entire year. Compared to China's 68 launches, China would actually be far ahead. So even though China is dealing with this setback right now, the overall trend is clear. Without SpaceX, the U.S. would already be behind. And that's it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.